what's going on guys i'm renegade this is my kitchen because today we're playing with pasta actually we're not i'm just kidding uh today we're actually doing wiring um the joke there being that a lot of people say that a wiring schematic looks like a drawing of spaghetti i get that it's actually pretty easy to follow but i understand the analogy but why am i doing it inside well, let me explain. So yesterday, I actually pulled the wiring harness out of my Volvo 245. I didn't want to show it on camera because it's boring, it's long, it's tedious, it's annoyance, and just easier to just pull it out and get the good stuff. So I actually have it here. Now, a wiring harness for a car is fairly long. So it's good to have a place that you can lay it out to work on in a fairly controlled environment. Luckily, I'm out of the elements here. There's no wind, there's no cold. I can work on it perfectly fine. And it's a long floor, so I can lay the whole thing out. Now, some of you are probably wondering, why did I pull the wiring harness out of my Volvo? It's because we are going to upgrade it. I'm actually upgrading my ignition system from the LH 2.2 to the LH 2.4. Now, there's a couple reasons for this. But uh, one is it's setting up for something bigger down the road. Uh, I did also have a little bit of a problem. There were issues with my wiring in my center console, unfortunately, which were calling a, causing a bigger issue. Something was shorting and causing a weird parasitic power draw. And frankly, I couldn't find it. I did all the proper tests, could not find the blasted thing. So to fix it, I just moved forward. This modification, this upgrade was planned, but I was gonna do it in the spring or summer when it was warmer outside, because frankly, it's cold out there. But with there being another issue on top of everything, I might as well do it now. Because I was gonna have to pull the wiring to find the flaws anyways, so why don't we just go to the upgrade? Yeah, so that was fun last night. And I learned a couple things while doing this wiring harness pull and comparing the wiring harnesses I have. Because yes, I do have an LH 2.4 wiring system. Actually, I've got the entire wiring from the headlights all the way to the taillights for a 1989 Volvo 244. And that's got the LH 2.4 ignition. Yeah, I got lots of parts. I got lots of Volvo parts. So, <clears throat> yay for having spares. I'm gonna get all this stuff laid out and I'm gonna show you and I'll explain to you guys what I came across when I did this and what I read and heard and what's false. There you go. That right there is all the wires for your engine management system. Get your two ECUs. This is for the LH 2.4. Fuel pump relay, all your random connectors, oxygen sensor, crank positioning sensor, injectors, cold start injector. Yep. <laughs> Loads of fun. Now, to be fair, I did go through and I did not quite do a wire tuck, but I organized the wires. You know anything about the Volvos, the older Volvos? Some of the wiring loom just doesn't seem to make sense. Like the wires for the injectors come out of the firewall on the passenger side, across the firewall, down the driver side, uh, under the intake manifold, up through the intake manifold, and to the four injectors. It's a pain. That's why on my car, my wiring uh, setup, I actually shortened all those wires. I had to go through them a while ago. And I actually shortened them all so that they come out of the firewall, up the firewall, and directly across the injectors. It's way easier. Why, why make things complicated? I don't like complication. So I did do that with this one already. And there are a couple things that change with this compared to the one that's in my car. But we're gonna explain that one later. Today, we're just sticking with the interior wires. Now, if you remember, that right there is your wiring for your engine management. This 
is your wiring for the interior and the accessories of your car. From here, headlights, all the way down, this isn't even all the wires, because this actually stops at the seats. What a mess. So the way I figured out to do it, that would be the easiest and best, is actually to lay it out as it would be in the car. I'm standing in a shadow, there you go. So how I've got it laid out is how it would be in the car. It makes things easier for you to figure out where is what. It's a lot of wires. But let's make things more complicated because I've got two wire harnesses. One for the 87 LH 2.2, one for the 89. LH 2.4. Yep. Now the great thing is that Volvo is either lazy or brilliant, depending on how you want to look at things. There's a bunch more wiring, as I said, wiring that goes to the tail lights, wiring that goes to the fuel pump. That's all the same. In fact, most of this wiring is the same. There were only a couple little differences that I found through all of this. The number one difference is that right there. This four wire prong is what connects all this to the brain. On this side, it's this guy. This nine pin is what connects this harness to the brain. The wires are routed different. That is why I had to put this in compared to this if I want to change that. Sounds like a mess, right? It is. It's gonna be worth it though. One of the funny things, and it really proves just how smart or lazy Volo is, if you come down here, like I said, this 89 harness is from a sedan. Sedans don't have rear wipers. <clears throat> then explain to me why you've got one connector for a washer jet and then two other random female connectors that would be in one of these. Obviously, it's because the wires are already there. The relays are already in here as well. Yeah. It's all set. So I laid this all out and I compared it all and found that there were only a couple differences. Just a couple differences that forced me to do this. So right now I'm actually tidying up some of my wiring because I'm special and I have accessories and whatnot. I'm actually relaying the wires and tidying them up so that it's not a giant rat's nest under my dashboard. Because it was. It's what happens when you start working on cars and you're young and you don't know any better. And then as time goes on, you just add more and more stuff. There just tends to be more and more wires. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. I've also run some wires a little bit better in terms of organization. For instance, instead of using a fuse for like my voltage, I'm actually running a hot wire all the way from the battery all the way down. It's going to go in to the dash and all that stuff. It will lay it out better. I'm gonna do the same thing with a negative wire. So I've got a good hard wire right there. It's a giant mess, but it's totally gonna be worth it. But now I'm gonna finish laying everything out and switching them over. And then we'll be able to go outside and put it in the car. And then we'll get it done and explain what's different in terms of the engine harness. Now I mentioned that I had heard before that if you wanted to do this changeover from the 2.2 to the 2.4 that just pull the engine harness. No, it's not that easy. Don't let people tr trick you on that one. The wires are not the same. They are routed differently. The connectors from the brain 
to the actual car. If you're going to do a changeover, the easier way is to just pull the entire thing out. Luckily, there are a bunch of connectors that you can disconnect so you don't have to pull all the wires out. And I'll show you what those are uh, when I get out of the car because it's just easier that way. But like I said, there's a whole bunch of wire connectors that just disconnect it and you leave a bunch of the wires there. So I highly suggest if you're looking to do this, go to a junkyard, find yourself a parts car, pull the wiring out of it. Good luck though, because this took a while. It took me like five hours to get everything out. Yeah. All right, let me move this over. This is an absolute mess. And climbing in and out of this car is very difficult. Yeah. So it looks like a mess right now. All right, it is a mess. This much wiring is a mess, period. But believe it or not, most of these wires are in place. So I started with no wires in here, so you got to watch me wrestle the whole thing through the dashboard, because that's just the easiest way to do it, rather than trying to go under and pull back up. Yeah, but I got all the wires run. Some of these, like this big long wire, it goes all the way here. It actually goes out the firewall and all the way to the front of the car. AC. Yeah, all this goes all the way out front. All this goes to the buttons and switches right here. These wires all go to the dashboard, the actual gauge cluster. Light wires. There is a fuse panels, gotta get refilled and bolted back in. All these wires gotta be plugged in. Basically, like I said, everything is in place. Now it's just a matter of actually connecting everything. At least on this side. Now I do have some stuff I gotta do on the engine side, but I wanted to show you first. Earlier, I said that there were connectors which save you from having to pull all the wires. Here they are. They run under this dead pedal, or plate, they're right here. 
And these go all the way back to the fuel pump and the rear lights and the rear glass and the whole nine yards. But they all can be un uh, they can all be disconnected from right here and then they all go away. They can all stay in the car while you pull the harness. Very helpful. Yeah, so everything is in place. Except for over here in the engine compartment where I have these two harnesses to plug in. But I had to cut the wires when we took everything out. And here they are. Now I did do the smart thing and I figured out which wires on each of these two segments go to what. So I made sure that I had the right harness on the right side, all good. But then some of these wires, I'll show you, are virtually identical. Got a couple blue wires on this side that are the same diameter. So I figured out by tracing the wires which one is which, and I stripped one on this end, and I stripped one on that end, so I'll be able to just solder them together and eliminate them. Process of elimination. If I got two wires of the same diameter, the same color, and one set are stripped, I know that they go together, and then I know that the other ones go together. So I'll solder the ones that are stripped first, strip the other ones, solder them together. And basically how I did it was, <clears throat> I figured out what the blue wire was on the one side, or whatever color I was looking at, figured out what it was in the one segment, and then I figured it out on the other segment. So for example, the windshield washer pumps have a blue wire. So I know that from the blue, or from the pump itself to the specific blue wire, using a continuity test, I figured out that those are the same wire. Then go to the other harness, the big harness with the fuse box, and test the blue wire to the, uh, the stock switch for the windshield wipers. Once I figured that out, they match, they line up, awesome. Figured out that wire. So I gotta solder all these together. That's gonna be fun, that's a lot of soldering. But then I still have to run the engine harness. Which is gonna be a whole nother thing because there are a couple of components that have to switch on that. But as you can tell, it's starting to get a little cloudy. The temperature's starting to drop and I'm getting a little cold. It's getting a little late. So I'm gonna have to end the video here. Next time, all this will be done, we're gonna move on to the engine compartment wiring, so the actual engine management, and we should be able to have this all fixed up, all ready to go, and should have the car running. So if you like these videos, and you wanna see what's, uh, what's coming for this car, Remember to hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload another video. And if you like the video, please hit like. Leave a comment if you got any comments or questions and everything like that. Yeah, it's a lot of work. That's why I gotta split up into two videos or else it's gonna be like an hour long video. Oy. Like I said, next video, engine, we're gonna get the car running. All right, until next time guys, you guys keep rocking and rolling. I'm gonna keep taking care of business. See you in the next one.